Chris has got no family photos of his his family because Nothing. she yeah. took them all. She took his mother's jewellery. When he came home from offshore and entered the house, everything was virtually gone. It was a sofa left, I think. Mm. A sofa because you couldn't take it. But all the antiques that they had collected together were all gone. So she's nobody's fool. <laughs> So, so to reiterate, Anne tried to take a court injunction out to stop her son from seeing Holly. And Holly wanted to see Greg because she missed him and she loved him. And the police and the court found in Greg's favour. They said there was no reason and they could see it was Anne trying to stop him. Yep. Yes. Yes, yeah. All right. Okay, we're going to take a little break, and uh, we'll come back. Um, no, hang on, hang on, guys. Uh, we're having a little bit of technical difficulty, and we'll carry on with some questions. First off, <coughs> hang on. <coughs> I am choking here. Um, do the two accused ladies think that this matter can ever be resolved? I mean, Wynn and, Sil and Sylvia, how, how are they going to, how are we going to put this right? Um, uh, this is the most important thing for us to look at. Oh dear. Well, the damage has been done, really. But I mean, in terms of, would you be interested in having a full-on public hearing? Yes, certainly wouldn't refuse that, no. Because all this information would have to come out in court then. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. We, we actually, all of us, you know, all the accused that we have spoken to, you know, the accused and the, and the alleged victims, all the people that have looked into this story, we would all love for it to go to court and for yeah. the full truth to be known. Because I'd love to see how they're going to call to court someone who doesn't exist. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And, my and what they're going to do, make, make um, Wynn and Sylvia's children stand in court and tell them they've got to tell the uh, jury that they've been abused when they deny they ever were yeah, yeah. they won't no and well my, my two even, sons sorry yeah so i was just gonna say they were not even children when they first met holly well in fact Catherine, Catherine has never met holly no jennifer i remember right. seeing her once or twice when she was about 18 my like holly was 18 but jennifer was about 20 odd then so she would have just met her in the passing, and, and my sons were both in their twenties when they which, ever set eyes. Which one, Win? John? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, we'll that's... talk about Win's son, John, later. Mm. I think. Yeah. yeah. We'll save that for later. I've lost him. <laughs> yeah. He was the best one, you said, Win. Yeah. yeah. Was no trouble at all. Mm. But I'd like to answer Mel uh, your your question of, of where we can go with this now. Yes. And uh, I would. Sorry, this is Sarah speaking. Yeah, this is Sarah. And what I, in my mind, this has all been disproved. This is, it, it's quite obvious now that none of, none of the stories are, make any sense and they're not correct. So, I, I mean, I'm already moving forward and, and I'm sure that other people are as well. I mean, I have been, I followed the Holly Gregg campaign closely for two years and I can see the sea change in people's attitudes. And I and I do think it's reflecting very badly on the truth movement in the UK because people have come to the Holy Greg campaign and used it for their own means. And without doing without doing any of the background checking. And people who have followed them and wanted to believe in the conspiracies, wanting to believe that the world is run by pedophiles or whatever, Satanists, or, or as David Icke, Masonic Satanists, then they, they're realising that that's just not the case. So, I mean, it's really up to, it, it's up to the truth movement in itself to have a look at, at what they're saying. And everybody who wants to follow Brian Gerrish, Roger Hayes, has, has to look at what these people are saying. So that's my hope is that there can be some openness and some a being able to talk about it. And there was always my hope with Erich that I could that I could communicate with him in some way that we could talk about it. So I, I mean I would still be appealing tonight. Can we 
discuss it openly without fear of being called uh, pedo protectors, MI5, shells, trolls, everything. I've been called constantly, but I mean, it's uh, like water. water well, well this that seems to happen. Everybody that starts to doubt or question the story gets this string of names and accusations hurled at them. Yeah. So that's my wish, an amnesty. Can we have an openness and talk about things in, in, openly without fear of being called basically a pedo, which is kind of the worst thing you can call somebody these days, what pedo, murderer, you know, it's the, it's the worst. Sort of. <laughs> well, well, take that recent case of a man that was accused of being a paedophile. He wasn't. He was beaten to death by a mother and her son. And this is, you know, people do not think of the consequences of publicly calling somebody a paedophile with absolutely no proof whatsoever. There are vindictive people out there. There are mentally ill people out there. You shouldn't encourage mentally ill people in their delusions or their want for vengeance against somebody. Yes, that is the bottom line, that these people, Brian Gerrish and Belinda McKenzie, are supporting a woman who's ill. Uh, they're supporting her illness, and that is what has really got to change. That we, the people well, well, they, they basically don't have to accept that Anne is mentally ill. Well, the trouble is, I don't think she's really got many real friends left around her because that's what she needs now. She needs real friends that can give her proper help. You know, you know, she does need to we, be helped. Wynne was a real friend of Anne. Yeah. She tried to get help. She yeah. got put on the list. That's right, absolutely. You know, Anne has to accept she has a problem. and knows she's been telling lies. She needs now, some real friends around her, and and, and they're yeah, going to be not the to people find. that are surrounding her now. No, no, no. no. They're just they, they have agendas. Yes. Elle, can I just say something? That's when uh, speaking there. Yeah. 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 Uh, all this tosh that's been in the internet and all this evil, nasty things that have been said. At one time, there were about twenty-seven thousand followers all over the world. Now, my name's ban been bandied across Google, YouTube, in the worst possible way. Can you imagine the legacy that this leaves for our families? You know, I mean, this stuff is in the ether forever. It's horrendous. Yes, imagine your grandchildren Googling your name and finding that. that. Yes. Disgraceful. It is. Yes. Horrible. Well, of course, there is the long-term impact, and um, I've, I've, I've got some questions coming in. Hold on a second. Uh, Richard, you want to read them out for us? Yeah. Um, since, they're, since it's basically slender, why are you not taking people like Brian Gerrish, like uh, Mackenzie, uh, M and Roberts, to court for defamation of character? Did you guys get yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's have a look at the law. Now, uh, Scotland and England, uh, the law varies, but basically, as the law stands, you can call anybody anything on the internet, and in public, but uh, if you put it on printed paper, you then have a case for defamation. Now, unfortunately, Wynne and Sylvia and the other accused can't take Anne and Robert to court unless they pay for it. And they are innocent people. Why should innocent people have to pay to...